Good evening, Ambassador. You know so much about Timor-Leste that I thought I was listening to an older ambassador for Timor-Leste. But uh, we are too new to have an, an ambassador as old as you. <laughs> and um, and uh, actually we got completely lost for 90 minutes. So I was thinking like I hope that our process of nation building will not be so lost as uh, our direction. And this was my worry to, while coming here. Uh, my sincere thanks to uh, Fairleigh Dick Dickinson University, to Ambassador Kamal for the kind words addressed to me, and I hope that I'll be able to answer your question as I go along in my presentation. I'm very grateful for the interest you have shown in my country, and it is indeed a privilege for me to speak before you tonight. The history of my country, Timor-Leste, as Ambassador said, is, is, might be not well known to you, I have traveled extensively in New York and Europe, and very often I spend half of my time explaining the geographical location of Timor-Leste. Today I was asked to present my country's view on nation building, and I beg your indulgence as I touch briefly on the history of Timor-Leste in order to set a stage for some of the challenges we face in, the, in this process of nation building. Timor-Leste is a half island the size of Kuwait located in the most eastern island of Indonesia archipelago and was settled by the Portuguese in 1510. For the next 450 years, Timor-Leste was arguably the most neglected of the Portuguese colonies. After a complicated process of uh, decolonization in 1975, Timor-Leste was invaded by Indonesia. What was then anticipated by the Indonesian military generals as a short and a quick operation turned turn out to be a nightmare in the Indonesian foreign policy and in the subsequent years. For the next 24 years, we Timorese paid a heavy price. A third of the population was killed for our refusal to accept the occupation of the island. The Indonesian also suffered. Figures range from 5 to 25,000 troops killed in the battlefield in the island and thousands more were wounded. But subsequent to the financial crisis which devastated most economies of Southeast Asia in 1977 and the fall of the military regime, Timor-Leste finally was emerging from the downfall of the Indonesian old regime. In September 1999, the Security Council, Council with the adoption of Resolution 1264 acted swiftly on the advice of then Secretary General Kofi Annan and ended the violence in Timor-Leste that preceded after the UN-sponsored referendum on 30 August. The violence destroyed 70 percent of the precarious infrastructure of the country, killed over 1,400 people and caused over 250,000 refugees, which roughly one-third of the population again. The violence also left a vacuum in all sectors of our society, including education, law, order, and civil service. The UN and other members of the UN family responded to the call of the Timorese people and millions of citizens around the world and took action. Within days, the Security Council decision to authorize an international force of intervention for Timor-Leste, an Australian-led contingent of brave men and women soon landed on the island. Weeks later, the Australian-led forces were joined by many other countries in the region and came as far and came as far as the Republic of Ireland. Interfet, however, was not able to prevent the destruction of the country, but was able to prevent a greater human tragedy. The decisive action of the UN Security Council saved many thousands of lives. UN humanitarian agency, international NGOs acted quickly and prevented a potential humanitarian disaster. Timor-Leste, for the UN, was one of the finest, uh, finest moments. With the case of Timor-Leste in 1999, the UN entered a new phase of uh, experimenting in nation building. Equally so for the Timorese leadership. However, the Timorese leadership lacked formal governmental experience and institutional memory. The Ibrahim report and the Secretary General's high-level panel have elaborated ele eloquently on the complexities of post-conflict situation and nation building. The reports made convincing arguments 
that for peace to be sustainable, the international community must stay resolute and engage. While we all must be aware of the political and financial constraints that militate against ideal solutions, nevertheless, I believe that long-term plan and commitment is most effective in securing the peace. Our experience shows that in, sh in short-term missions are inefficient and costly. A succession of UN missions have engaged in Timor-Leste with UNAMED, Interfed, UNTAYED, AMESED, UNATIL, and UNMED. The majority of UN, however, left Timor-Leste in 2002 with the, leaving behind a very thin skeleton of public administration. However, nonetheless, Timor-Leste was known as the United Nations success story. It was left for the Timorese, like us, to continue with the success story. Today, we are free and sovereign, slowly building the institutions of the state that we believe best serve our people. It was less than five years ago that the Secretary General Kofi Annan handed over power to our elected president. Let me briefly touch upon some progress made until the country relapsed onto the nation building process in, in April last year, nearly a year ago. Inheriting a thin skeleton left by the UN in 2002, the government made real progress in some sectors like public administration, education, and health. We are also failing in many others. The most fragile se sector in the public administration is our judiciary. We have few judges, prosecutors, lawyers. Most of foreign business will not trust our judiciary. Sometimes public offenders languish in jail without trial. And there are no short-term solutions. We are nonetheless committed to create a strong and independent judiciary, but this, may, this is many years off. The government the government's budget for the next fiscal year contemplates the recruitment of international judges, prosecutors, and public defenders. Our economy, despite of the crisis, is doing better than expected. The World Bank prediction that Timor-Leste was going to experience a negative growth was proven wrong. In fact, this year, despite of the problems we face, the Asian Development Bank predicts that the economy will grow around 32.1 percent, the fastest in the southeastern Asia. We hope that they are right. And this is driven basically by the windfall from the oil and gas revenues, capital investment in public infrastructures, such as roads, hospitals, schools, and of course the robust presence of international on the island. Unemployment is still very high and poverty remains pervasive. But we are hopeful that the economy, the economic growth will drastically reduce unemployment and the poverty rates. In less than 10 years of our independence, Timor-Leste moved around 20 places in the United Nations Human Rights Index. International organizations, development partners, and the United Nations successful reports praise the leadership and the success of the country. Success, however, we learned that success, however, sometimes entails, I guess this is a symptom of our third world countries, the increase of arrogance of some leaders some of our leaders began to feel very much arrogant. A country which began in 2002 with $70 million in national budget and out with $70 million, 70% 70 was from external assistance. After two years, it has a budget that ballooned to $330 million with only 80% of external assistance. And if you factor in the, the international cooperation, the annual budget is around $430 million. For the size of Timor-Leste, it was a lot, of, a lot of money. And our leaders, therefore, undermine some reports that were calling for problems in the security area. The crisis that we experienced in April last year proved particularly for us, the Timorese, as well as the international community, that we must not take for granted the apparent tranquility in the country and that urgent preventive measures must be taken in a resolute manner to prevent a relapse into the past violence and instability. Timor-Leste is known as one of the poorest countries in the world and the poorest one in the, in the southeastern Asia. As I said, we have a robust national budget. However, we lack human resources. We have spent too many years fighting for our independence and deprived ourselves of education. And this is what 